In 2011, Perth was becoming restless about what was happening as far as a new open-air event stadium was concerned. Subiac Oval had served Perth so well, built in 1908. It was refurbished in the 60s, in the 80s and in the 90s. Sure, it had done a great job during the 20th century, but going forward, what was going to serve Perth in the 21st century? An earlier proposal to build a new stadium next door to Subiaco Oval at Kitchener Park had been shelved. Now a new plan was announced. Perth's new stadium would be built on the shores of the Swan River at Burswood. With opening day just around the corner, it looks like something has time travelled from the future and landed on the old Burswood Park golf course. Understandably, Western Australia's curiosity with Perth's new stadium has grown as the project has taken shape. Over the next hour, we're going to satisfy much of that curiosity with a grand tour of this superb facility. You may have seen bits and pieces over the past few months. This will be the first time it's all been wrapped together in one special, right here on Nine. It was 2007 when a state government report commissioned to explore the possibilities of a new stadium was released. And the recommendations were largely that we should have one quality oval space and one quality rectangular space. So put all your money into one good one um, and all your money into one good rectangular space. Let's not have a range which are mediocre and then also controlled by the sports. Have them controlled by the government and then other sports like soccer and rugby union and rugby league and concerts and all manner of things would then also get access. But of course the two major tenants and anchor tenants are Australian rules football and, and cricket. In the air and that's it! That's it! Ron and the steering committee pretty much stuck to what was outlined in that first report, except for the location. This is where we finally settled and what a spot it is. If you're a golfer, you remember this used to be part of the old Burswood golf course. Even if you weren't hitting them right, you could still admire the view. And what the stadium has done, it has opened up this whole eastern side of the river to a whole new audience. It really is a prime position for Perth's new stadium, which sits on the north side of the old golf course. It's not just the views of the river and the city, but it's also next to an existing train line. Access in and out of the stadium is as important as the stadium itself. Colin Barnett was the Premier at the time, and the riverfront location was something he saw as critical to the success of the stadium. Burswood had been talked about but rejected by a previous government, and uh, after thinking about it carefully, I made the decision it would be Burswood, even if it costs more. And I think most people would agree that was definitely the right decision. Each site has its advantages. Obviously, Subiaco had the advantage of the railway infrastructure already being there, the shopping precinct ne nearby, uh, the uh, restaurants and bars, and of course, the history to the site. This site has other advantages. It's an entry statement to the city. Uh, it's uh, on the river. Uh, you can have parklands around it. Uh, they both have their advantages. We wanted this to be the best stadium in Australia, at least. We wanted it to be not only a spectacular design, which it is, but we wanted to cater for all sports. Obviously, AFL is important, but so is cricket and rugby and soccer games. And we wanted it to be uh, something that really defined Perth. Ron Alexander and the steering committee had put together a set of big picture recommendations for the stadium. But what about the detail? One of the great features of this stadium is that it's fan friendly. So they asked ordinary West Australians, they wanted to know what they wanted. We did a stadium tour, had a look at the Olympic facilities under construction in London and went to Twickenham and Cardiff. We, uh, we also went to New York, MetLife Stadium, Yankee Stadium, Houston, Dallas, and brought back a whole range of features. All the different sports that may play here have been part of a group. In fact, there's been nine different advisory groups, you know, fans, media, people requiring universal access. Alongside the user groups, the state government also had some very clear ideas about how the stadium would work, right down to ticketing for individual sports like AFL. It would not be entirely for members of the major clubs, that there would be, in this case, it's 6,000 general admission tickets plus other tickets in terms of uh, visiting teams and the like. 
another decision that was made uh, very much, I guess, by me was that there would be a dedicated Eagles change room and a dedicated Dockers one, which keeps the two clubs happy and keeps their supporters happy and the players. The challenge of incorporating many of those ideas into one coherent design came down to three architectural firms working together. Now, their vision for Perth's brand new stadium was finally revealed in July of 2014. For Colin Barnett, the design reflected the fabric of Western Australia, a characteristic he believed was important for the state's flagship stadium. There was a competition held, three um, very outstanding submissions were put in, but the, the winning point was probably the exterior of this stadium with the sort of the bronze brown colours, uh, very much reminiscent of Western Australia as a mining state and uh, the Pilbara and so on. And uh, in that sense, it is not just another stadium, it is a, a beautiful piece of architecture. Hassel has been involved in a number of stadiums and in fact, we had worked on the Adelaide Oval, the first stage of that and the MCG with Cox. So both companies had actually worked together previously. We involved HKS as well because they had just done the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, which is, from a fan's first point of view, is one of the greatest stadiums in the, in the world. So that's how that team got together. Our element here really was making sure that we delivered the best possible outcome inside this fantastic seating bowl. Everything in this stadium and the government's brief about being fan first is designed around getting people as close as we possibly could. So there's no bad seats. The next part then is as you walk around, you're constantly linked into the stadium. This lower concourse, you can constantly see into the ground. And that sense of connectivity is a critical element on what is the social side. Why do you come to the footy or the cricket is to socialise as well as watch the game. So with all the bars and the fantastic food and beverage services through here and that ability to constantly feel connected is a part of it. The next one then is, of course, as you go up through the building, you have this view and this connectivity back to the hills and back towards the city and the river. So that notion of understanding your place and this building becoming of this place is an element that really makes a great venue work from that sort of functionality point of view. And that connection to both landscape on the outside through the perforated nature of our facade so that you know where you are, you give it a sense of place. Likewise, you're always connected to the ground and we've brought people as close as we can to the ground. I think that, for me, has been a great achievement. It's essentially about people of this place and how they're going to use it and uh, visit. And I think being from the West Australian, it was very important to be able to do that. I think we were actually, it's, it's success of part of our bid and our delivery team was to really deliver on that um, homegrown understanding. Even as animation, the design was so eye-catching. There was no doubt this would be Perth's jewel shining on the banks of the Swan River. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is beautiful. You like it? Y yes. <laughs> Do you guys like it? Yeah, yeah, it's really big. It'd be great to try and get other entertainers here, like big entertainers. When we come back, WA construction expertise helps make this stunning concept become a reality. And later, WA user groups talk us through their great ideas. Sports' greatest rivalry. I still get goosebumps. Like you've never heard before. I love bowling quick, so I love scaring the out of here. Over three massive nights, the three greatest series ever. Game on. Starting with the Ashes that had the palms packing it. They had to face Lillian Thompson. Mate, they were shitting themselves. Boom, boom. It was just carnage. They must have got the shock of their lives. <laughs> Forged in fire starts next on nine. Magnificent shot. It's out of the boundary. This is where champions stand up for their country. This is where legends are born, where history is made. But only Nine News can take you right into the heart of this game. Live coverage from the Wacker as the Ashes go on the line. Nobody knows cricket like Nine News. Nobody. This program brought to you by the Unbelievables. Coming soon to Crown Theatre. Book your tickets now. With the design finalised, it was time for Perth's new stadium to jump off the page and onto its prime riverside position at Burswood. With the unveiling of the design also came the announcement of the principal contractor. 
The West Stadium Consortium, which also included the architectural firms, was led by the Brookfield Group and investment company John Lang. The consortium took on an extensive brief to design, partially finance, build and then maintain the new stadium for the next 25 years. We put all the people from strategic projects, Department of Sport and Recreation, Venues West, you know, all the different government departments, but also Brookfield Multiplex of Contractors on the one site where you're going to build the stadium. And it's just been a fabulous relationship with people getting together and with everyone on the one site. Chris Palandri is the Regional Managing Director for Multiplex. Chris, thanks very much for giving us some oh, of your yeah. time. What's well, been a busy schedule? You must be so proud. Couldn't be happier. Great stadium, everybody loves it, and I don't think Western Australians really know how good it is and won't really understand that until they sit in here with, you know, 60,000 people watching the football or whatever sport or concert they're watching. Tell us about this particular construction site. What sort of problems did it throw up for Multiplex? Well, the, the biggest issue, I guess, is that we're building on a tip. And while the government did some surcharge works over the project, we had to push two and a half thousand concrete piles into the ground down to rock to found the building on. So you come across many things when you're banging into the ground that far. It's about 40 metres down and you had to get through all the rubbish. When you hit a tyre, you get resistance and sometimes they go in quite cleanly, but there was a lot of work in that. It was December 2014 when the first of those 2,000 piles were rammed into the ground to support the foundations of the stadium. In the coming months, a number of contracts were awarded to West Australian businesses. By completion, 80% of contracts at the new stadium were being serviced by West Australian businesses. The stadium was being built for the people of Western Australia by Western Australians. In May 2015, the first concrete was poured. Construction was underway in earnest. There was a schedule to keep and the team was committed to meeting their milestones or even beating them. The following month, more cutting edge design was revealed. The 400 metre pedestrian footbridge from East Perth across the Swan River to the stadium precinct set to create even more eye-catching impact. When an event is on, there is no public parking here at the new stadium. The way to get here is by foot, bike, bus or train. There is a brand new train station with six platforms. When a big event is on, 28,000 people will use that train service. In August 2015, work began on replacing the old Belmont Park train stop with the new Perth Stadium station. The station that was here uh, really did not cater for, for big numbers at all, even on the, on the days when there were events and the station was open. So we had to build facilities and set up our infrastructure to go from, on a good day at the football, doing 17,000 people to doing 50,000 people. So it was obvious that we needed multiple platforms and that's what we've got here now. This terrific station has got six platforms. People arrive in dribs and drabs, but they generally leave all at once and they all want to be on the train and home at the same time. Within a fortnight of work starting on the new train station, the spotlight swung back to the star of the show. The stadium had a name. Up until today, it was known as the new Perth Stadium. But now the state government has officially announced Perth Stadium is exactly what it'll be called. Now, this stadium belongs to the people of Western Australia. They've paid for it and they deserve to have uh, a capital city, Perth, as the name. But as we now know, that was one strand of the Perth Stadium story that wasn't quite complete. Over the next few months, work on the circular stadium structure continued at a furious pace. And by December 2015, another major milestone. The first of the 50 steel trusses designed to offer fans shelter from the elements was installed. In just one year, the stadium had grown from subterranean foundation pilings to its full 42 metre height. 
those trusses, there's 50 of them, they're 45 metres long and they're about 28 tonnes each. They came in a single piece on a, on a truck from Henderson, took about four hours to get here during the middle of the night and they were put on the pitch and they were lifted up in one piece. And they weren't propped from the inside so that we could lift them up and leave them by themselves and get on with the construction work underneath. That was a feat in themselves. The sense of anticipation was growing as milestones were ticked off and completion drew closer. When the first drop in wicket was tested for pace and bounce and later the playing surface was completed, the stadium had its centrepiece and the finish line was in sight. Then, in October 2017, the scope of the stadium's riverside presence at night was extraordinary as the technical team tested the integrated lighting system. The venue's full capability to light up the night sky was simply awesome. Later that same month, a long-awaited announcement, one that saw footy fans across the state breathe a sigh of relief. It's official, WA football is moving to the new stadium. Crushing <laughs> it back. A deal finally secured. And within a few weeks, an even bigger announcement. A change of government had brought about a rethink on the stadium name. Perth's newest landmark today got its new name, and the word Perth is gone. Well, there, 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 there's, we got a good deal. It's understood the Singapore-owned telco will pay our state government around $50 million over the next 10 years. Well, here it is, 100% complete and just over a month away from its public launch on January 21. So what's it going to be like to attend an event here at Perth's new stadium? Well, I'll invite you to come for a walk with me after the break. Welcome back. Your first visit to Perth's new stadium is something like unwrapping a Christmas present. You don't quite know what to expect, but you know it's going to be good. Allow us to give you a guided tour of what it's like to arrive by train at the Perth Stadium station, make your way through the precinct and then up to your seat inside the new stadium. This is Ronnie Hurst, he's the WA Government's Project Director. He's been with this project since 2008, can you believe it? Ronnie, showtime is almost upon us. How are you feeling? Yeah, very excited, very excited. I mean, we're getting close to the finish. It's a buzz of activity as we finish off the precinct and the stadium, but looking forward to the first event, uh, the Community Open Day on 21st of January. All right, it's very exciting. Tell us about the station here. When people arrive, what can they expect? Yeah, I mean, we've had a strong focus, Michael, on the fan experience. So this is about from the time you leave your front doorstep to get public transport to the stadium and then enjoy the game and back on public transport uh, back to your home address. All right, now how would you suggest we do this guided tour? We've just come off the train. Where do we head to first? Well, we'll head uh, through the arbour and then we'll head to one of the ticket control points. Well, Ron, we arrived by train, but over here we've got a brand new bus centre. Yep, a uh, brand new bus station to service all the suburbs that aren't serviced by the train line. Uh, we can stack 70 buses up there, and we've got a dedicated space for country coaches. And on a non-game day, we use it for parking, uh, parallel parking. OK, so non-game day, you can park there. Yep. I see you can also bring your bicycle as well. Yes, very importantly, um, pedal power. And uh, we've got 600 bike racks around the whole precinct and park uh, for people to come on their bikes. Tell us about this little oval here, what's that for? Yeah, we've created a little uh, uh, kids oval if you like, so parents can come with the kids and uh, kick a footy, play cricket, uh, depending on whatever sport's here. Um, and it's just a great little space uh, to bring back childhood memories, I guess, for some parents. Sounds fantastic. All this, and we still haven't bought our tickets yet, so let's head on over to the ticket box, get sure. those tickets and get inside. So we've got five uh, ticket control points. We had a group with people with disabilities and, and they told us that when they come to counters, they need to be able to get their wheelchair underneath. So ticket control points, each one has a couple of cutouts underneath so they can get right up close to the microphone and make their order for a ticket. We've got our tickets in hand. Now we're going to go and see this magnificent stadium. Ron, it's, it's so vast, it's so big, but it's also quite magnificent to look at. Tell us about the facade. 
Yeah, the facade, Michael, was uh, designed to reflect the geology of Western Australia. It, uh, so it has these ochres and browns and light browns of uh, the Pilbara, particularly. In the facade, uh, there's LED ribbon lights, which helps us light up the stadium, again with team colours at night time. And there's 1.7 kilometres of uh, LED ribbon board, so it really is a quite a dramatic effect when you're, you know, you're coming to watch any sport here, or a concert indeed, you know, you can light it up with anything you like. So these steps, Michael, these bring us up into what we call the control zone, so you're in the stadium here, it goes all the way around 360 degrees around the stadium, and then of course you've got this magnificent view uh, behind us of the Swan River and the city skyline. Isn't it superb? This is a, a unique view for West Australians because we haven't had a chance to see this particular aspect of the city. Yep, and, and obviously as you come in the stadium and you get higher, you know, it just gets better. The outside experience has been fantastic. Gets better as you get inside. Ah, can't wait. This is the entry level to the stadium, so you're on uh, level one, uh, the back of the lower bowl, and you get this view, 360 degrees, around this level, we put the toilets on the outside, uh, the food and beverage on the outside, so you keep the view of the playing surface the whole time. It was something the sports fans were particularly keen to have so that you didn't miss any of the action wherever they were on level one. It's quite extraordinary, really, because you can literally see through. You've got an uninterrupted view right across through to the other side. If I come down these stairs here and I want to get a drink or, or use the toilet, yep. I don't have far to go. No, where you uh, come to a stairwell, within 40 metres, you must be able to access a male or female toilet or one of the 50 food and beverage outlets uh, available on all the levels of the stadium. Great services for everyone. And it doesn't matter where you're going to get that, you can still see the action out there. Yeah. Let's go and find our seats, Ron. Oh, wow. It is... It's such a spectacular stadium. Ron, just tell us, how many seats do we go for in the end? Well, we've got 60,000 uh, for oval sports, and because the front row is elevated 1.2 metres, uh, we can bring in another 5,000 for rectangular sports, so 65,000 for rectangular sports, so soccer, rugby league, rugby union. And the performance criteria, so that we can do back-to-back -back games, yeah. is that you bring the seats in in 12 hours and you take them out in 12 hours. Traditional old-style stadiums, when you're down on the fence line, you're so low, you feel like you're seeing almost the curvature of the ground. Here you're upright and uh, the view is just absolutely spectacular. It is, you, you won't miss any of the action. And also the playing surface is entirely flat as well. So you don't lose half a player over the other side. So you, you see every single piece of the action that you can. Tell us about the Wi-Fi capacity here at this stadium. Yeah, it was, a, it was a very strong theme that came through our sports fan user group. They, they wanted the access to the data, so the stadium has been designed that 35,000 people can download live video streaming at any one time in the stadium, and we're pretty comfortable we're going to achieve that uh, when the stadium's open next year. Ronnie Hurst, thank you so much for this magnificent tour of this uh, incredible stadium. Uh, can't wait for them to bounce the ball or bowl the ball or kick off, tap off, whatever we're going to see. It's going to be superb. And for you at home, do not go away. There's so many surprises at this magnificent stadium. When we come back, something that's going to completely blow your mind. Welcome back to your first tour of Perth's new stadium. Now, we've heard a lot of the phrase fan first during the construction of this project. It's become a mantra attached to just about every decision to do with design and build. And that is the stadium goers, you and me. We have been front and centre with just about every decision in the setup of this magnificent complex. Well, the team at Perth's new stadium took that fan first philosophy seriously. They invited Western Australians to apply to take part in one of nine different user groups, each tasked with putting specific ideas to the design team that would make their stadium experience the best it could be. Some of the ideas are just logical, others quite brilliant in their simplicity. Then there are some that are creative, others innovative. Either way, you'll salute these very clever West Australians who came up with them. important criteria that was raised in some of our early sessions was really having a seamless experience. So you're coming in, you know where you're going, you've got the signage that's telling you where you're going. And I think that's really important for a new ground where no one knows where they're going. 
what we do is see in some of the grounds that we're at where they're smaller, you've got queues crossing over where people are trying to walk around the ground, so it's really important to have really wide access ways. One of the other things that we see here is that you can actually see the ground when you are in the concourse. So even if you're walking around the ground to the toilets, you can quite clearly look out and see the action on the field. I think that the first thing that a lot of the women um, fans like myself will really appreciate is the ratio of the um, ladies' toilets to men's. There's a larger ratio of ladies' toilets, so I think that's fantastic. There's also requests for more family rooms rather than having um, the change tables for the babies just in a normal toilet or in a disabled toilet. So they're just some small things, but again, they go a long way in really improving that, that fan experience on the day. I expected that our recommendations would be heard. I probably didn't expect the execution to match the recommendations as closely as they have. At each food and beverage and entry point, there's a wheelchair height entry point that we can go through, which is fantastic. There are toilets within 30 metres and food and beverage outlets within 30 metres of every wheelchair seat, which is another fantastic result. The seat rises, which is where our eye line is, is, is world class, absolute world class. I think as far as relative to previous infrastructure outlets, I don't think anything has been as well considered as the New Perth Stadium when it comes to access. We've been dealing with, I guess, input from the state government, Brookfield Multiplex and also Cricket Australia on, on I guess, how we can best go about creating a, a facility here that's going to work for cricket and then also bringing across the characteristics of, of the Wacker ground and, and replicating them in a drop-in wicket. It's the way of the future. The beauty of this stadium is it enables footy to be played in the winter and then drop-in wickets to be put out in the summer and, and you can play cricket. But you can also do concerts and have other activities out on the ground and, and the flexibility of being able to shift the wickets in and out to, I guess, make sure that they're performing at their optimum when they're out in the middle. Instantly, you, you think about the, the Melbourne stadiums, the MCG, uh, Eddie Had Stadium. I think Adelaide Oval is, until I walked into this place, probably a, as good a stadium as I've been fortunate enough to play in. And I think this not only rivals it, but, but will probably top it um, once we do get the opportunity to play out here. 55, 60,000 passionate Western Australians getting around you makes the hairs on your neck stand up and, and to be able to get out there, perform and hopefully entertain a crowd like that, as a sports person, it doesn't get much better than that. We've already seen just how incredible this new stadium is going to be for the artist, for the athlete, but there are so many other special places that we fans can go to really get up close and personal. Mike, tell us about this here. Tell us about the locker room experience. Well, the locker room is going to be a very special experience, completely unique in Australian sport. It's a space if you're lucky enough to be invited or if you want to pay the price, that you can sit inside this room and watch the players warm up, whether they be cricket players or footy players, watch them warming up before the game, hear the sounds that they make, um, get excited with the players themselves, and then when they're ready to go, they'll run out through this room onto the ground and you can follow them out and stand at the boundary and watch the action close up. Incredible, so never before seen in Australian sport. Absolutely unique. And what's even more unique about this space is after the match, you can stand and watch post-match interviews, which happen right in this room, in a studio that you can have access to. Literally part of the action. There are other areas too, though, you're telling me about. Oh, yeah, if you reckon this is special, wait to see what I've got to show you upstairs. Well, Mike, this clearly is another premium area to watch the game. Um, what's this called? So, welcome to the coach's room. This is a premium hospitality room for about 100 people. Uh, this is a great place to be entertained, but what's outside is truly special. Wow. This is why they call it the coach's room. We're standing here literally between both coaches' boxes. Not only will you be able to watch the coaches in action on a match day, but you'll be able to hear the action piped out of the rooms into this group of very special fans. What, I mean, what a privilege to actually hear what's going on. So what moves are going to be made, who's going where and what's going to happen. How do the coaches agree to something like this? Well, let's see what they do once they, things aren't going so well. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this is about the fans and the stadium has been built with a fans first approach. And this is a great fan experience. It's completely unique in Australian sport. And I don't think I've seen it anywhere else in the world quite like this. Yeah, it's quite extraordinary. Uh, Mike McKenna from Optus Stadium, thank you so much for just giving us a mere glimpse into what's going to come. And uh, it's so exciting. Uh, and I'll tell you what else is very exciting. After the break, we're going to take you for a look at the facilities for the athletes.
Welcome back to our special look at Perth's new stadium. I've been a sports journalist in WA for more than 35 years. And I have to say that the opening of this new stadium really is a milestone uh, in my career because there's so many exciting aspects. One aspect I really want to have a look at is what it's like to be a player on game day. Ronnie Hurst is going to give us a special look. Hello, Ron. Hi, mate. Now, Ron, can I be a player just for one day? Well, I think your playing days are over, Michael, ah. but the um, way we've arrived is where the team will uh, come into the changing rooms and we'll head in here. OK, great. Wow. Whoa. This is one of uh, five changing rooms we have. It's obviously being customised for West Coast Eagles. Um, identical to the Dockers? Certainly. Uh, accommodate 60, so they have the full squad midweek for one training session. OK, OK, which is a real bonus. Tell me, the size is extraordinary and the facilities, this looks to me like it would be as good as any other stadium in the world. For instance, this is the medical room? Yeah, we're in the medical suite straight across from the changing rooms. Again, it's so, this is almost like a, like a mini hospital. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, the demands of elite sport are ever increasing, so we've got to make sure we have strapping facilities, physio facilities, doctors, consulting rooms, so the stadium has it all. So this would be the same for whether it be Chelsea, whether it be the Australian cricket team, Socceroos or the Wallabies? Yep, every sport that plays at the stadium can uh, have access to these uh, facilities. All right, I'm changed, I'm strapped, I need to talk to the coach. Follow me. So Michael, this is one of uh, three lecture theatres that we have in the stadium. Um, this can be used for stadium tours, but its main purpose is actually to brief the teams uh, before a game. Kitted out with all the mod cons? Yeah, as you can see behind me the uh, whiteboards and there's uh, smart boards as well. Obviously a little bit finishing still to be done, but uh, we're almost there. One thing that strikes me again, Ron, the size of this. Yeah, this, this accommodates 60 because the home teams uh, have the capacity to bring their whole squad down for one training session midweek before a game at the weekend when they'll obviously cut to a playing squad. So match day plus strategies during the week. All right, you've inspired me, coach. I'm ready to go, but I need to warm up. Walk this way. All right. Why am I on the bench, by the way? <laughs> so before you get to the warm-up area, you have the water station, so the, any sport can fill all the water bottles uh, quickly and efficiently. And then, this is unusual. Um, this yeah. is one of the demands of modern elite sport. It's a charging room for the GPS that a lot of the sports now wear on the back of the uh, jumper. It really is a sign of the times, isn't it? Uh, wherever the players are, whatever they do, the fans want to know, but also the club obviously grabs all the statistical information. And this, this is, is the warm-up uh, area. Yep, um, we have uh, three of these areas. Um, only two are multi-purpose in terms of uh, indoor cricket wickets. Um, so the, the finish for cricket, obviously, is synthetic grass. Um, and then uh, we have the netting that can divide two wickets and another two on the opposite side. And then you come on to a rubber floor finish for uh, sports so that they can actually, um, it takes the cleats, it doesn't damage their knees, and they get a good grip. And the players can look at themselves uh, while they warm up, or is there more to <laughs> the, the intention is it's one-way glass, so the fans on the other side in this lounge uh, can watch the warm-up, they can listen to the warm-up because there's microphones, and then the players head now onto the playing surface through the lounge itself. It's like the, uh, the long room, the famous long room at Lords, where the fans are here, they're having a drink, they're getting ready for the game, and they actually see the whole team come through here. Yeah, it's a unique experience in Australia, um, and it's fantastic for the fans. From a fan experience to a player experience, imagine the feeling of walking onto the turf of this magnificent stadium. Right? Yeah, Michael, we wanted to create a coliseum uh, effect and bring the fans as close to the action so they got a great view of the action, and, and I think we've achieved it. Yeah, have. In spades, it's just magnificent. But let's fast forward things. We've come through the game. I was a late withdrawal from the team. Devastating. These things yeah. happen. <laughs> they do. Um, recovery. I'm hearing that the recovery process, the facilities here, are extraordinary. Can we have a look at those? Certainly. Follow me. All right. Well, Ron, game day recovery has come a long way. Yeah, the, I mean, we have three of these rooms in the stadium, uh, three ice baths, 1.6 metres deep, and then a hot and cold spa if you want it. So, yeah, recovery has come a long way. And this is some of the best facilities you'll find in a stadium in Australia. 
think the main thing is post-match, minimise that risk of inflammation and things and the, the ice water. I remember the old days, well, not that long ago, the Eagles and the Dockers both used to use the old Solo rubbish bins. They cleaned them out, obviously. Filled them with water, then filled them with bags of ice, and then the players would sort of jump in the top. But this is extraordinary. I'm sure it's going to help with their recovery uh, enormously. Ron, thank you so much for your guided tour of the, uh, of the facilities for the players. It's been absolutely magnificent. And we finished game day, but after the break, I want to tell you why this stadium, every day of the year, is going to be a major attraction to the public of Western Australia. Welcome back to our special tour of Perth's new stadium. Look, I'm no architect, but I think it's an absolute masterstroke the way the design has utilised every square metre of space. I mean, for example, the Chevron Parkland there, not just on game day, but can be utilised on every single day of the year. Yes, this was a requirement of the design brief, but it's how the architects have responded to the brief that is just so clever. And I think from a design perspective, we actually approached the stadium design from the outside. So we actually inverted a lot of the content within a traditional stadium and brought it to the outside of, of this stadium. So behind us, you'll actually see that we have brought the a la carte restaurants and the buffet restaurants. So it's concentrating on giving the, the precinct a life 365 days a year. How good is this? How are those views? This is the Goodwood restaurant and it is just perfect for a pre-event dinner. Or even better still, and the great news is, this is open on non-event days, so you can come and have dinner and enjoy what has to be one of the best Swan River vantage points of our magnificent city. It is just superb. Then there's the old Burswood Park golf course clubhouse and locker room buildings that have been turned into the Campfield. Along with a bar that can host 2,500 people, the Campfield will have its own microbrewery and a function centre. So when it comes to food and drink, I think it's pretty obvious the stadium precinct has it covered. But what about those who want to do something else, particularly the children? This is a wonderful space between the camp field and the stadium. It's a small oval, so you can have a kick of the football, a little bit of cricket, maybe even a soccer ball before an event. But the real treat for the kids, that's on the other side, between the stadium and the Swan River. Honestly, the little tackers will chew up hours exploring the Chevron Parkland. It's a fascinating combination of playgrounds and Aboriginal art that focuses on our local wildlife. In Noongar, in the Aboriginal understanding, they have six seasons, not the four seasons that we have. So this playground through here that Chevron helped um, sponsor has six different play areas and they start off with very young kids up to older kids. Nine Aboriginal artists come through and create wonderful artworks that tell stories and are part of the play areas. One of the key components that we actually integrated the stadium facade is a poem written by Kim Scott, Kaya. We actually, it's a story about the convergence and the arrival and celebration of Noongar cultures. It's a really special moment and unique to this project. It's a stunning result that is even more impressive when you consider how the site has been used over previous generations. The Premier at the time said that this area would be Kings Park of the East, and I mean, Kings Park was a thousand acres set aside by wise men in pristine condition for future generations. This site had been used as a sewage treatment plant, an uncontrolled rubbish dump, a cement works, and up until the 50s in, in Perth, Aboriginal people used to have to have a, a passport to be in, to go into town, and they actually weren't in allowed into town after six at night and before six in the morning. We said if the Premier wants this to be Kings Park of the East, we needed to mend and repair some of those mistakes of the past. That became the story that we wanted to do on this place, and I hope you'll agree that, that we've achieved it. One of the things that's become obvious to us since we've been making this special is just how proud everybody is in this project from the planning, the design and of course the construction and also those who had to call the shots early in the piece. This site uh, becomes an entry statement to Perth. It is a spectacular piece of architecture and this site also allowed the creation of this wide parkland setting on the Swan River with Perth as a backdrop. In terms of promoting our city and Western Australia, it could not be better. 
even those who criticise the site, criticise the design, criticise the cost, uh, they've all disappeared and everyone wants to take credit for this stadium, but it belongs to the West Australian public. Over time, it will just become that emblematic symbol of West Australia, just like the MCG is of, of Melbourne, and we're really looking forward to that journey and actually being part of that with all the West Australians. In 40 years of working on most many of the major buildings in Western Australia, this is the first time everyone loves it, everyone's positive about it, and the, the ownership that Pete talked about is really there. So um, I, I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it becoming an icon. It is very spectacular to look at, and I would like to congratulate the former government on ensuring that it happened, and it does mean that we can compete with the MCG and other locations around the country in terms of attracting sporting and concert events. Already we're seeing the bookings that are coming through, not only the crickets, but you know, like concerts and uh, uh, other events that will be there. So it will put us on the main stage. It's hard to explain for people that haven't been there how good this stadium is. And as this extraordinary complex has sprung up out of the Burswood Peninsula, something else has surfaced. The people of Western Australia have really embraced it. There's a real sense of ownership of the new stadium. We've had more tours around this stadium than you can possibly poke a stick at because everybody wants to come and have a look at it because it's great, it's really terrific. People of Perth are starting to own it and are truly proud and actually are now globally talking about it before it's even open. I think that's what I'm, I'm personally proud of. So everything you see about the architecture of this building from the outside, from the parklands around the outside to the roof design, makes this building uniquely WA. So when we look at the local, the national and the international market, when the first stadium comes up, you know where you are. You know that this is a proud element of a proud state on a global stage. We now have a world-class facility that rivals anything around the globe, really. So um, I think not only for the people of Perth, but for the people of Western Australia, something that they can call their own and, and certainly be very proud of. I would love to be a sports person that run onto this stadium, packed house, 60,000 people cheering. I mean, I could even hit a six, I think. It is a world leading venue and this will define Perth for many, many years to come. And let's face it, our future sporting history in football and soccer and rugby and cricket, and maybe even a world athletics championship, all the great sporting events ahead of us will happen here. It's impressive. It's actually quite magnificent. It shows that in any field of endeavour, no matter what it is, West Australians can do anything. Ahead, at least 50 years of great sporting moments. Some to celebrate, some to commiserate. Concerts to enjoy, so many great memories to share with family and friends. And it's all right here. Western Australia, this is your stadium.